Well, I've been working for the Medical College of Wisconsin for the past 15 years or so, uh, really doing a lot of community engagement work across the city of Milwaukee. I am a Hispanic professor, and so a lot of the work that I do is uh, really serving the Hispanic community here in Milwaukee and trying to elevate understanding really about health and uh, how we can improve our health as we as we go through our days in life. And the culture, every culture actually does have an impact um, on how people perceive their ability to change their own health uh, trajectory. Of course, I'm reflecting on my own family's experiences. My grandparents, mis abuelos, were born in Mexico. My grandmother was born from Manzanillo, Colima. Uh, my father was also born in Manzanillo. My father, on the other hand, just passed um, this last January. Um, and he passed from something called idiopathic uh, pulmonary fibrosis. And the term idiopathic sounds complicated. All it means is that we don't know what the cause was. We, as scientists and as healthcare professionals, uh, we're, we're not sure why he died. And the reality for the communities that we come from, uh, from communities of color, is there are health disparities for our communities uh, that we don't fully understand. You are involved in a very important national program or project um, that is called All of Us. Um, can you uh, tell us what is this about and what is looking uh, to achieve? We're trying to recruit one million people across the United States from every different background. And that means um, if the person is from a different community of color, if they're from the able community or the disabled community, if they're from uh, various different backgrounds in terms of LGBT status, uh, transgender, all of these differences in how we are in the world, they have implications for our health and our health care. There are subtle differences in our genetics that can impact how we in take in medication and the side effects that we have. And right now we're really treating to sort of the average person. Um, oftentimes that's the sort of average middle-aged white man. And we haven't gotten enough genetic information from many other different groups. And we are unable right now to really tailor medication for those groups in the way that we want to. And that's really the future of healthcare is precise medication so that we're minimizing side effects and we're getting exactly the targeted medication dose uh, and the right medication for the right person. We're starting to return what are called whole genome sequences and people who want to know what their health risks are from a genetics perspective and I think something that's even more um, kind of every day is we're starting to return what we call pharmacogenetic results, which means how do your genes impact the way that your body ingests medication and metabolizes medication? And that can differ from person to person. The, that information will be in the physician's hand as well. And I think that can really be transformative uh, for people's healthcare. Really, the only requirement right now is that you're an adult. And we're, again, we're asking people from every different background, every community, um, whether that's white, black, Hispanic, Asian. One of the things for the Hispanic community in particular is I want to be very clear that the federal government is involved and they've been very careful to think through that there's different immigration status even within one home. Uh, Social Security number is not required to participate in this study and the information is protected. So you can't uh, get this information if you're from law enforcement, for example. So it will have no implications for somebody's immigration status. If you're here in the United States, it's important for us to ensure that you have an opportunity to participate regardless of what your status is, regardless of what your background is. We're asking everyone, please participate. Is there any information about uh, how many Latinos have participated or joined uh, to this uh, uh, database? I don't have the national numbers, but I can tell you right now that for Milwaukee, we're sitting at about 530 people. It's about seven or eight percent of our uh, overall sample size. It's about half of the the percentage of Hispanics that are represented in Milwaukee. Uh, March is the month of uh, women. Have you a uh, picture in uh, that experience about uh, Latino women? One of the classic things for me is, you know, my abuelita was the person who took care of the entire family, always. Um, you know, preparing meals, uh, making sure that we came home, uh, making sure that the family's together. Oftentimes, Hispanic women and women as, as a whole put their own health last because they have so many pressures trying to make sure that the family is moving forward in, in this life. And so we see sometimes women ignore uh, problems that they're having. There's more than one situation here at the medical college where we have heard about a woman who clearly had you know, the symptoms of cancer, but didn't come in for appropriate screening early enough. Focusing on what is the future of healthcare, women can set for themselves and for their family 
the expectation that health comes first. There are uh, these beliefs among Latinos that we do many wrong things with our diet, with our uh, traditions. Uh, can you talk about both, actually? The food in the Hispanic culture is heavy or it's the wrong type of food to be healthy. And sometimes I see people trying to adjust how we're eating. I mean, we even have programs. And the reality is, you know, I like my tortillitas and I, I like to eat beans and all those things, right? Just like everybody else. I think actually the solution is often digging deeper into our own culture. And there are healthy foods, for example, within the culture. Maybe it's replacing and having frijoles negros instead of refried beans. But that's still part of the culture rather than saying, we're gonna, we're gonna switch this out for something that's not really part of the culture. So part of that is just reaching deep inside ourselves and deep inside the stories within our families. Uh, the other part of Hispanic culture that we know is protective around health is that we are a very social group of people. And those social ties are incredibly important, both in terms of what we feel inside of ourselves when we connect with other people, but we're also there for people when they're struggling with their health and maybe we're able to provide some additional support around that person. So I think there are incredible strengths within our culture around healthful behaviors, right? We have to think about all the transitions that have also happened for our families and how those transitions have impacted us and impacted our health. So I think the easiest thing is to go to the website. So the national website is very simply joinallofus.org. Si hablas español, it's simply joinallofus slash es. We could not do this work. The Medical College of Wisconsin and the National Institutes of Health could not do this work without local partners that are working in our communities of color. Uh, we're working extremely closely with agencies like United Community Center, uh, 16th Street, um, FQHC, the Federal Qualified Health Clinic that's serving the Hispanic community on the south side of Milwaukee, um, with UMOS, which is a uh, really a, a service to immigrants coming to the United States. And so for me, this program has also been an opportunity to not just talk about the past, but also talking with my children about what is it to be Hispanic? What is it to think about where we come from? And what, what are the genetic influences there um, that are going to inform their health and healthcare in the future as they move forward in life? Um, and that's a very traditional worldview in some way, right? That we're not just thinking about one generation, but we're thinking about this really across time and across multiple generations as well.